In this problem, we're asked to find the total kinetic energy of the mechanism that has three slender rods, and we're given the initial omega of AB, um, and the system is constrained in the following way. So since we're given omega AB and we need to find the kinetic energy, we need to find omega for each of the sections, um, because that's how you find kinetic energy. You need the velocities or angular velocities. Um, and since we're given omega AB, we start here, we find velocity of B and then we can find velocity of C and omega BC. Then we can find omega CD with VC, okay? So again, whenever you have to find the kinetic energy, you need to look at velocities, um, and we start from the point where we know the velocity, which is rod AB. So first of all, I'm gonna write in my coordinate system. So X is positive to the right, Y is positive up, and rotation is positive counterclockwise. And then I will just um, start with rod AB. So we can use our uh, velocity equation, which is VB, or relating velocities in two points um, along a rigid body, is equal to VA plus omega AB cross product to R of B with respect to A. Okay, so in this diagram here, VB will be a vector that is, again, perpendicular to um, rod AB. So this is going to be VB, and then we're going to have our, radi our radius or distance, R of B, with respect to A, which is which links point A and point B. Okay, so remember, it starts at A, ends at B. So this is R of B with respect to A, okay? And we can plug in values because again, we have omega AB, we have RB with respect to A, and VA is zero to find VB. And VA is zero because that A is pinned, so no motion. So we can solve for VB um, by just doing the cross product of omega AB, which is um, five but it's going to be negative 5 uh, radians per second in the k-hat direction. And remember, negative is important because we defined rotation to be positive counterclockwise, and omega AB is clockwise. Cross product to R of B with respect to A, so this is going to have two components based on that theta angle. So um, the x component is going to be negative 0.4 uh, times cos of 30 degrees in the i-hat direction. And then the j-hat component will be positive plus 0.4 sine of 30 degrees in the j-hat direction. Remember, negative because we're going to the left, and then positive because we are going up. So with this, we can solve this cross product, and we can solve for vb. And vb is going to be equal to um, 2 cos of 30 degrees in the j-hat direction, and 2 sine of 30 degrees in the i-hat direction. This is all of the units are meters per second here, because it's a linear velocity. Okay, so now we have VB. Next, we're going to move on to rod BC. So we could use this same equation here, um, but we have two unknowns. We wouldn't know the omega, and we wouldn't know VC. Um, so what we can do is we can relate everything to the instantaneous center of zero velocity, which we can easily find in this case. And once we relate everything to the instantaneous center of zero velocity, if we use this equation about the ICZV, this velocity here would be zero because the velocity at the instantaneous center of velocity, zero velocity is always zero. Um, and we can directly solve for omega AB or omega BC given VB that we already know. Okay, so we have to find the instantaneous center of zero velocity for this bar over here. Um, and in that case, the instantaneous center of zero velocity is, remember, when you link to um, the, when you have the velocities at the two extremes, you or any points, you find, you draw a line perpendicular to these two velocities where these two lines cross, that's the instantaneous center of zero velocity. So we know VB is in that direction, and we are going to know that VC has to be in the um, in that direction, okay? This is VC. 
Um, and again, they're all vectors. Um, so given that, um, we are going to find the instantaneous center of zero velocity by drawing a line perpendicular to the velocities. We draw one over here. It's a bit offset because I don't want to go over that radius. Um, but we can see that these two lines meet here at the ICZV. Okay, so that's the instantaneous center of zero velocity. Um, and we have all those distances, or we can solve for the dimensions or the distance of that point to uh, rod BC. So if we draw the triangle, which kind of looks like that, um, so the top length is, uh, so this is B and this is C, the top length is 0 0.5 meters. Then we have this theta angle being 30 degrees. So we can solve for the right side, which is gonna be root three over six. Um, and um, with that, we have the um, X component and the Y component of uh, the ICZV. So we can go from here Y component, X component, and relate it back to B. Okay, so we can write down that same equation for bar BC um, about the ICZV. So we have uh, v ZB is going to be equal to the velocity at the ICZV, which we know is zero, so we can already cross it out, plus omega BC cross product to R of b with respect to the i c z v which we just solved for the that those lengths okay so v b is known and this is known so we can solve for omega b c and we get the following equation so v b i'm just going to copy two sine of 30 degrees in the i hat direction plus two cos of 30 degrees in the j hat direction. I just switched the two components. So i, i, j, j um, is gonna be equal to uh, omega bc, which is unknown. So we're gonna leave it at omega bc, but we know it's gonna be in the k hat direction because it can only be in the k hat direction. Cross product to r of b with respect to i, c, z, v, which is essentially this um, length here. So again, I'll draw it offset even more, but everything should go along um, rod AB. I just don't wanna put everything one on top of each other so you can't see it. So R of B with respect to I, C, Z, B. And so that's essentially just this hypotenuse, but we wanna have it in components. So we have this is the Y component in the positive Y, and this is the X component in the negative X. So that's gonna be negative. So we have um, negative 0.5 meters in the i hat direction uh, plus um, root 3 over 6 meters in the j hat direction. Okay, and we can solve for omega bc in this equation. So omega bc equals to negative 2 root 3 in the k hat direction, and this is radians per second. Okay. So now we have omega BC, we can solve for um, VC now, okay? So VC, again, we can use the same equation about the ICZV, but with a different radius and with um, knowing omega BC. So let's do that. So we have VC is equal to the velocity at the ICZV plus omega bc cross product to r of c with respect to the i c z v. Okay, so we just applied this equation, added this same equation here at a different point. And instead of b, we applied it at c here. Okay, and this time we know b v c. We know that the velocity of the i c z v always has to be zero. So we can solve for v c. So this is what um, v c is equal to. Omega BC is negative 2 root 3 in the k hat direction. Uh, cross product to R of C with respect to the ICZV, which in this case is just vertically up. So it's this length over here. So R of C with respect to ICZV. Um, and so it's essentially just in the vertical positive y direction. So root 3 over 6. Uh, in the j hat direction. 
and this is again meters okay and so when we solve for this we get that VC is equal to um, one meter per second in the i hat direction okay now that we know what VC is equal to we can solve for um, omega CD uh, so omega we can apply the same equation so VC is equal to V of um, D which is the IC is that V because it's the point about which it's pinned so no velocity which is so that's going to be zero plus omega CD cross product to R of C with respect to D okay so I essentially applied that equation to the last rod um, but here ICZB is at D because it, everything is rotating about this point which has a zero velocity and so we can solve for um, VC because we have omega CD or we can solve for omega CD because we have VC and we have this radius here so again this equation turns into um, one meter per second in the I hat direction is equal to omega CD in the K hat direction cross product to R of C with respect to D which is just vertical Y direction on 0 0.2 so cross of 0 0.2 meters in the J hat direction and so that's going to yield omega CD is equal to negative 5 uh, radians per second in the k hat direction okay so once we have all of these velocities we can then um, solve for the kinetic energies so now we can do energies so first we're going to split this off into three sections energy for the, th for the three bars so we have that the total energy so T total is going to be equal to T of AB plus T of BC plus T of CD. And we need to find each of these. So each of them will be equal to, so for example, T of AB is going to be equal to uh, one half I omega squared. Okay, so this is the definition of kinetic energy. Um, so this is really important. You can find the kinetic, the kinetic energy is always the same um, for the bar, but the inertia and omega, well, the inertia is different about different points on the bar. Okay, and you have to be kind of really smart um, about what inertia you use. Um, so that you can use the actual value of omega and then you don't have a linear velocity. Okay, so you can have a rod that is translating and rotating. Okay, um, and if you pick different points on that rod, you're going to have um, different combinations of the two, but they always add up. So the linear component and the rotational component, they always add up to the same energy. But if you pick the right point, you do not have both components, so it's easier to calculate. So in this case, for T of AB, I will use um, is equal to one half I of A, so I about A, omega AB squared. Okay. And why do I do that? Because I know A has zero velocity, um, and um, so I can easily find I A just with a formula given for a slender rod. Um, but then I can use omega A B squared, which I have, and at this point there's no linear velocity. Okay, so that's why I can eliminate that one half M B squared term, um, and it's just a one term calculation, less chance of making mistakes. So in this case, I will just go plug in the numbers. 
I of A is going to be equal to one third ML squared. So one third times five kilograms, and that's the mass, times uh, 0 0.4 meters squared. Um, that's the um, I of A, so about the end of that rod, one third ML squared. And then omega AB is given as five radians per second. Um, it's negative five, but again, uh, five radians per second, um, but it's squared, so the negative goes away. So we have that T of AB, kinetic energy of AB is equal to 10 over three joules. Okay, let's move on to BC, which is a bit more complex. So again, we have the same formula, I omega squared. Now we have to be smart about which point we take I, so we can actually use this equation and there's no linear velocity term. And in this case, it's going to be the ICZV again. And so we calculated what the ICZV is for bar BC, which is down here. So we have to find I about the ICZV, not the end, but the ICZV. For bar AB, the ICZV was at A, so that's why we picked A. So there wasn't that linear velocity term. Here we have to pick ICZV. So what we do is we find the inertia about the center with 1 12th ml squared. And then we move with parallel axis this distance here. And what is that distance? That is essentially the hypotenuse of this triangle here. So it's the hypotenuse of half of this thing here. Okay, so it's this thing squared plus this thing squared. And this thing is just half 0.5, which is 0 0.25. Okay, so not too complex. So we have one half times I of the ICZV omega BC squared. Okay, this is going to be equal to, actually I'm going to go on a new line because it's a bit of a longer calculation. So one half times I of ICZV, which I said is going to have two terms, uh, 1 12th ml squared, which is 5 kilograms times 0 0.5 meters squared uh, plus m r squared which is five kilograms times r which actually let me just move everything back a little bit which is going to be equal to um this well r, r is the square root of uh, this component here plus this half component there. But since we need r squared, then we can just take, not take the square root. So root three over six squared plus 0 0.25 squared. And remember this 0 0.25 comes from half of that 0.5 length. Okay, and so this is the inertia. And then omega is uh, negative two root three squared, that negative goes away. So T of BC is equal to um, 35 over two joules. And then we have T of CD, which is essentially just like the first one, um, is gonna be equal to one half I omega squared, one half I of D omega CD squared, which is equal to one half times one third ml squared, which is the inertia, times five kilograms times 0 0.2 meters squared, um, times 0 0.5 radians per second squared. So T of CD is equal to five over six joules. Okay, so this is again, meters, meters. So if we add T of AB is equal, uh, is T total is equal to T of AB plus T of BC plus T of CD, which is equal to uh, 10 thirds joules plus 
35 over 2 joules plus 5 over 6 joules. So T total is equal to 21.67 joules. And this is our final answer.